All right, so when practicing minor scales, or any scale for that matter, you wanna to try to practice them in all 12 keys. So you can just simply write out all 12 pitches of the chromatic scale, and then randomly select them, checking them off as you complete them, and maybe trying to accomplish, say, three to four different keys a day, if you can't get all 12. And you also wanna take some time writing out the scales if it's a new scale you're learning. Because what that'll do is it'll help you become more um, fluent with the interval contents within that scale and what really defines it as being that particular scale. In addition, it's going to give you the particulars about what pitches fit in that scale, which you might need to know later on down the line. So I've included diagrams of all 12 keys of the minor scales for the piano and the common shapes for the guitar in the attached Music Theory Survival Guide Part 2 ebook. So definitely download that if you haven't already. Okay, now let me give you some more ideas on how to practice this. So using the guitar, for example, if I wanna do, say, the key of D minor, right? I could just simply go up and down the scale in that one position, okay? Which, that will be a good start, but it's not gonna get you that far. You're not gonna get a lot of mileage playing the guitar in such a position-centric way, right? So what we wanna do is we wanna see all the options in a vertical and a horizontal way. So if I'm thinking D minor, I don't want to get stuck in just always thinking D minor on the fifth fret of the A string. So I'm going to start string by string and build one octave scales and see how far I can get. So if I start with the E string, find D on the E string. Boom, here we go. Ready? Okay, I started with my pinky. That's one way to play it. But in that same position, I can also think, okay, I can start with my first finger. And... Cool, so there's a couple ways to play it. Let's move to the A string. We already discovered that fifth fret is D, so I can do it up and down that way. What if I start with my pinky here? Slightly different than when I did it up here. Feels different, sounds different, and when you hit the root note an octave higher, it's in a different fret position than it is down here. Okay, uh, what about on the D string? Well, here's D up on the 12th fret, so. I start with my first finger. Okay. So now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six different ways that I just played that. What if I start on the G string? All right, here's D. All right. That's another way, a couple ways to do it. So then I can start putting these all together. Let's say I did two octave fragments, okay? Now I'm more free when I think D minor. Now I have this entire fretboard mapped out. Right, and I'm more able to be fluent with my lines and not play myself into a corner. Okay, that's some ideas on how to practice on the guitar. Um, the keyboard isn't really um, a position-centric instrument like the guitar. So just being able to play in all 12 keys and get the fingerings correct will be a good starting point there. And then we want to think about our ear. So it's always important to be able to identify what you're hearing in your head and play it on your instrument, right? Gaining that freedom is what will help you better express yourself musically in the long term. So as we know, the major scale has root, major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, major seventh, and then an octave. Now the difference between a major scale and a minor scale is just pulling the third back, pulling the sixth back, and the seventh back. So those are the only three differences between a major and a minor scale. They're actually pretty big differences, but if we just think of it as three different notes being altered, it's kind of easy to memorize, oh, that's the minor scale from the major scale. Now being able to hear it. So if you hear D, can you hear a minor third above it? Bum. Okay, cool. Perfect fifth. What about a minor six? <laughs> right? Being able to play those intervals as you hear them in your head. So if I have a melodic line that I'm hearing, right? And then play that melodic line in different positions. Right? 
or right and then being able to identify what intervals one two three two three two one five okay or apply the same way okay so hopefully these ideas get some creative juices flowing and you're able to then make music out of practicing your scales rather than just monotonously running is that even a word <laughs> running up and down them monotonously uh, it can get boring and it's not very musical and chances are it's not going to appear in your playing naturally so practicing your scales in this way that i've described will help you um really play music during your practice time and allow these um, sounds you're hearing in your head come through naturally when you're creating music or improvising. All right, so have some fun practicing and let me know if you have any questions. All right, cheers.